The official release date of Microsoft Flight Simulator is still very much an unknown quantity. And with that in mind, many people are very eager to try their simulator out, and also of course to help where they can with development. And this is where Alpha Access comes in. Now Alpha Access is naturally covered by a fairly strict NDA, once you're in you can't talk about it, and you can't show footage or pretty much anything at all relating to what you're seeing and what you're doing there. But nonetheless, people still want in. Now, many people are in. We don't know the numbers. It's likely in the hundreds, quite possibly in the thousands. And Sobo are accepting new applicants all the time. And over the past few weeks, what I've noticed are some comments in my videos, as well as on the wider internet, asking precisely how you can get into the alpha. So I thought I'd put together this video to help out with that particular question. The first place you want to head then is the official website flightsimulator.com. It's a fairly simple process, but it has thrown a few people out, especially when it doesn't always work. Now, you need to click on the login up the top, regardless of whether you've actually got a login or not. This is your Microsoft account. If you haven't got one, then you can create one here. Now, once you're logged in, you'll be sent to the insider page. This is a little bit different to the front page. You got a little bit of extra information here, such as the development roadmap, as well as some other bits and bobs. Up the top, you'll find what you want. It's the flight in the sign up. And there's one really important thing you should keep in mind here. This will not be available at all times. It's only available during the periods where Microsoft are accepting applications. It just so happens that they're accepting applications right now, so click the links below and head on in there and sign up if you haven't done so already. The first thing you will come to is the NDA. You'll need to read this and then agree to it. It's only a short NDA, but you know, if you're not sure or you don't agree with it, then don't proceed. And of course, if you intend to break it, then don't proceed either, because you're just going to get yourself in trouble. Now, once you decide to accept this, if you decide to accept it, you'll then find yourself presented with a survey. Now, I'm not going to go through this every step because what you'll need to do is choose your own answers. Don't follow what other people say. You don't follow what I say. Uh, this one here, I'm just going through it randomly here with a completely different email address because I've already signed up and I've already been accepted. But I just want you to see what to expect. So uh, basically be as truthful as you can. There's no uh, right or wrong answers here. Probably the question that's giving people most pause is when the survey asks you how many hours you've had in flight simulators. Now, some of you who have watched my videos I've seen haven't played flight simulators before. Others of you are experts in hardcore simulators, so probably got more than 500 hours. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this doesn't seem to have a huge impact on whether or not you actually get invited. I've seen people who have said that they've got no flight simulator experience whatsoever get accepted. And I've also seen people with 500 hours plus get accepted. And of course, people who have put in the same answers are still awaiting acceptance. They're not in yet. So... Uh, yeah, be honest here, it's just a case of Microsoft looking for a broad spectrum of users. The rest of the survey is pretty much the same. It asks how often you play flight simulators and then goes on to your preferences, what type of gameplay you prefer and what type of gameplay you intend to try out. Again, be honest. Eventually, you'll come to the question about the speed of your internet. Now, I'm sure most people will be able to answer this. A few may not. If you're not sure what the speed of your internet connection is, then head to the website speedtest.net. From here, you'll be able to get all the information you need. Now, in case you're wondering why Microsoft want to know the speed of your internet connection, well, that's quite simply because Flight Simulator 2020 has some pretty hefty internet requirements. Now, whilst the graphics are processed locally, what's going on here is that the geometry and some of the terrain, of the calculations for that, are being processed on the Azure servers and then are streamed to the end user. So essentially, the better your internet connection, the better your final results. Now, I wouldn't recommend lying here about your internet connection. However, do keep in mind that obviously, if you've got slow speeds, uh, your game performance may suffer from it and you may stand better chances of getting in with better internet requirements or better internet connections. Finally, Microsoft will want to know about your PC specifications. To send them this, you can uh, use your DirectX diagnostics tool and send them the report, which will include all the information they need to know. There's instructions on the screen or on the uh, website on how to load this up. Once you've got the DX tool open, then just save all information and uh, save the file somewhere. You'll need to save it as an XML format. Don't upload the text version because that's not what they're asking for. 
So at that point, you'll essentially have your alpha application complete. You may have to wait a while before you hear back from Microsoft. Uh, they are taking a while to get people in. But in some cases, people are getting in very quick. So uh, there's very much an unknown quantity there. Now, if you're still a bit curious and you want to know the types of PCs that are being accepted into the alpha, then there's a very good spreadsheet linked over on the Reddit subforum. There's a link also below to this spreadsheet. You can see it on screen right here. But essentially what you can do is see, check out your chances of getting invited by checking out the hardware that other people have and whether or not they actually got in. So then, that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. I really hope it helps out those who still had questions about the whole process. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.